in this booster, we're going to look at what is differentiation and how we can use differentiation to help us understand velocity, displacement, and other kinematic stuff in physics. The goal is actually, we want to get to this one, lah, trigo differentiation. But in order to get there, you must get step 1, 2, 3, and 4 first. So, in case you don't know or haven't learned what differentiation is, here is a crash course. So stay tuned. Firstly, what is differentiation? Lah? It's this thing we use to measure rate of change. So, does this sound familiar? Rate of change. Hmm, you have heard some definitions that have rate of change. Yes, it's related to differentiation and you can shortcut your way there. Firstly, how do you differentiate though? Let's say you have a function y equals to um, 2x squared. Okay, if I want to differentiate this thing, okay, I will put an arrow to show you, oh, when I differentiate with respect to x, okay, I want to see how is x changing uh, with respect to y, how is, sorry, how is y changing when x change a bit? So I will write it in this form, dy over, we differentiate with respect to x, right, so dx equals to, now how do we do this part? First things first, you need to check what, uh, the power of x is. Because we are differentiate with respect to x, ma, ne, I show you. Ne, ne, the x here. Okay, so you check the original. Oh, here got x. So does it have a power? Yes. If it has a power, you need to multiply down the power first. Okay, so 2 is coming down. That's from the power. From power. La. Then originally got the blue color too, right? So the 2 is still here. Then we write the x. But now you have done something to the power, so the original power minus 1. Is this a general rule of thumb? Yes. This is what we call the power law. Are you powerful? Yes, you are. If you know how to do this, powerful. Why do I say powerful? Power law. So what's the final answer for this? This will be 4x. If you do this often enough, this will be second nature. 2x squared differentiate become 4x. Okay, so this is the first rule. What if, one more quick practice, what if you have a equals to half x? Aha, uh -huh. and I say differentiate to get dA dx. What's the answer? Hmm, you think of this a little bit. x here, they didn't write power or how, uh, but this is power of 1. So you bring the 1 down, 1 multiplied by half is still 1. Then the x, oh, when you do... 1 minus 1, it becomes 0. So x to the 0, okay, like this, half x 0, this is 1. Now. You press the calculator, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So this is just half. So the answer is half. Oh, it's just this. Okay, very nice. So that is how you can do power law, basic power law differentiation. Now, how do we use it when we come to graphs? Mm, this is the fun part. Let's draw some graphs first. Let's say here is a graph. I am going to draw. Let's do a straight line graph. How about that? Can I? Uh? You know what straight line graph is? The one that goes like this. Ding. Okay, la, let's give it a inter y intercept. Ah, like this. Yes. Negative y intercept. So you've been do doing this many times in lab already. What is this equation of the straight line? If this is y equals to something times x. Then this will be, actually no, let me give you a positive graph, intercept there. Okay, so it is yx, this equation is what? y equals to nx plus c, right? Right? Now, why do we bother to do differentiation here? This is the second important thing. When we differentiate, what do we get? Uh? dy dx. Uh? Okay, okay, so we differentiate. Let's say we want to find dy dx. Because this is what's on the axis, ma. Okay, and why is this popping out? We will get what are uh, all these are numbers or oh. okay, like if this is 6x plus 2, okay, these are constant, so they will be gone. These are also constant. Uh sorry, this one the, the two is constant. Here go any power, x go any power, no more. This is power to the one, so the x will be gone. So if you differentiate that, you should get just six. I mean, you can write 6x0 zero plus 0, la, but you don't need to write that. It's just 6. So if you differentiate, you get 6. This is actually what we call the gradient. Okay, so I should write it here. dy dx will give you the gradient straight away. No need to delta y, delta x. 
Okay, and this is happen to also call the tangent to the line. We'll see what this means a bit. Ah. Okay, gradient. Actually, gradient now, you all usually write delta change in y over change in x, which is correct, but the original form of writing is actually this, dy dx. If you're not convinced, okay, y equals to mx. Sorry, let's say this graph is y equals to 6x plus 2. What's the gradient? y equals to mx gradient is 6. So when you differentiate, you should get 6. It comes together. All right. So differentiation equals to the gradient of the curve, which is also tangent to the curve or line. Now, what does it mean by tangent? Tangent means if I want to find the gradient at, I don't know, this point on the graph, I need to draw a tangent like this. Tangent is the same as gradient, right? Okay, so tangent, same as gradient. Sure. So that is what we call the tangent. If you want to apply this to kinematics, ah, let's do some kinematics fun. Okay, so remember ah, this basic idea. Ah. Now let's do some kinematics with dy dx and tangents. Let's say I have another graph. Looks something like this. And then I put one more down here. Ah. We will see why later. Put one more down here. We will see why later. Okay. Let's say this first graph. This I am going to, hmm, what shall I use now? Let's use displacement. Actually, let me write the whole thing in case you like, ah, miss why got uh, S come out there. If this is displacement, back to kinematics from AS, displacement against time. Let's say I want to look at, what shall I look at? A ball, yeah. Shall we do that? Okay, let's look at a ball that is thrown up and then it comes down. Okay, so what is the displacement going to look like? Well, we do know that our displacement formula, the Stuva kinematics equation is ut plus half a t squared. Actually, more accurately, I should say ut minus half g t squared. Where the minus come from? Because acceleration, if I want to use this up, is positive, down is negative. Acceleration is negative 9.81 or negative g. So this is the equation of the graph. How this graph look like? Le? I draw for you. It's going to look something like... Mm, something like this. La. Okay, upside down. Set face. So if I want to use this graph and this equation to find... What's the next one? Velocity. How am I going to do that? I know some of you memorize graphs, but how can you find what is a velocity graph? How will it look like? Here's when dy dx comes into play. You have already learned that the gradient of this curve is, well, before this we say delta s delta t. But let's not say that anymore. Let's say ds dt, which is also velocity, because velocity is the rate of change of displacement. You should remember this thing from AS already, yeah? velocity. Rate of change of displacement basically means this. ds, rate of change of s, per unit time, dt. So if I want to say, hmm, okay, to find velocity, I differentiate. So I will say this is now ds dt equals to, what ah, I differentiate, come here. I do d something respect to t. So here, u is a constant, so u can stay there. T is, oh, oh, T is going to be differentiated. So T is gone. Bye-bye. It's just U. Initial velocity U. Then how about this part? Minus half. Okay, G is constant. When you differentiate T, what do you get? You get 2T. You bring the power down and the power minus 1. So this will be U minus, oh, just U minus GT. Yeah. And this is, ds dt is velocity. So V equals to U minus GT. Ta-da! Oh, we have seen this before. Where have we seen this before? This is actually in the form of our other Stuva equation, V equals to U plus AT. Okay, so this is how they get their equation now. Okay. So this is the gradient of the first curve. So how are you going to plot this graph there? V equals U minus GT. This, have, this is the equation for velocity. Well, actually, it's negative gradient. Though. So it's going to look something like this. Actually, go down into the negative one. You can draw some more. 
Okay, but I have my axis wrong already. So yeah, I think of it drawing down. And what's the intercept? If you want to compare this to a straight line graph, y equals to mx plus c. Our y is what? V. What's our gradient? Negative g. What's our t? X. Sorry, what's our x-axis? T. What's our uh, constant? That is only constant by itself. U also like that. Though. So your gradient here is negative g. Gradient negative g. Initial velocity is u. Magic, right? Now, one more thing about the link between these two. You differentiate displacement equation, you get velocity. But remember I mentioned, right? Gradient is dy dx is also tangent. How to think of tangent of this curvy curvy thing? Uh? Is there a way to do that? Yes, there is. Let's look at an animation. Or oh, actually, I said the animation for later. If you want to find the gradient at, let's say, this point, how are you going to find the gradient? You have to draw a tangent first step. So you draw tangent to the curve. Then you find, okay, how steep is this tangent? Then you do your delta y delta x. So the gradient at each point is different. Oh. Here is a bit steep. At the top here, flat. Lah. So here, velocity is 0. Here, velocity is, I don't know, maybe positive 2. Okay. So that means at this time point, t1, Okay. if I plot it on the graph, at t1, we say the gradient is positive 2 because that is how steep the slope is going up at a steepness of 2. So that means... At this point, you should have 2. Then at this part, velocity should be 0. Wow. This means my velocity graph wrong now. T2 must be 0. So actually here should already cross the x-axis. Ah yeah. Never mind, I extend a bit. This is T2 and 0. So at e in each instant of time, you have a different slope. Alright. So, ah, you want to go one more step? Can Okay, okay, we go. The displacement velocity acceleration. So, acceleration, guess what? You know how the graph looks like? You say, nah, miss, acceleration is negative 9.81. We already know. Ah, yeah. But, might as well we solve this the differentiation way. So, if you have the velocity equation, which is V equals to U minus GT, or VU plus AT. If you want to find what is acceleration, how do we define acceleration? Rate of change of velocity. So rate of change of velocity, which is acceleration. Okay, so this will be you differentiate bang, with respect to t. Then you will have the u is just a constant. So you differentiate a constant, it just disappears already. Oh. Then negative g is a constant, t is gone. So negative g. So acceleration is negative g and acceleration is negative 9.81. So you have to draw a graph uh, down here, I guess. Straight line graph. Just one value only, 9.81. So ta-da, 9.81. What this means is, throw back, the gradient at every point on this graph is negative g or negative 9.81. That's why it's a straight line. Okay, so you must... Give a rough idea of what is happening. We go from one equation to the next. Like displacement is this. Then you come out with velocity. Differentiate become acceleration. Now, the last part for today is what if I give you some trigo to graph? Then how? Ah? Trigo graph, for example, this one. Why is this graph? Can you recognize the pattern? You should know already. This is y equals to sine x. If you want to differentiate this one, how? Ah? how do you, what, what, what do you get? So let's say I have y against nah. Let's say this is displacement because oscillations and this is in terms of time. So displacement against time. And I'm trying to say if I differentiate displacement, I get velocity. So how to differentiate? Ah? ds dt, which is velocity, equals to... Nah, nah, nah. Let me do it. Break down the steps. Velocity is ds dt. So, the equation of velocity is what? Now, this one is the one where you can't use your power law. You need to use something else. But before we go to the something else, let's use the graph method to help us solve what will the velocity graph look like. So, here I'm going to just put another graph down there. 
Okay, so if this is, we're trying to find what velocity, right? So this is velocity against time. Wow, how to find now? Uh? Okay, we're going to use some hacks now. Stay tuned. Let's look at the other idea we know. Velocity is ds dt. ds dt is the gradient of the st graph, right? And you can also say it's the gradient or tangent at any point. Tangent to the graph. So this is the key idea that we're going to use uh, okay, to help us figure it out. Now, how we find the gradient? Uh, okay, okay, okay. We try to find the ones we know for sure is on top here. At this point, the slope is flat. Gradient is zero. So gradient zero means velocity is zero. Ah, straight away we know a clue already. So we know somehow, somehow at this point, the graph should cross through V zero. Okay, sure. Then go other place up. Ah, here, here also zero, flat. So if you here also got a zero, then there's two places already, must cross. Hmm, what else are, what other clues? Let's do this side. If I want to find the gradient at the beginning, I have to draw a tangent like this. So it's some positive V. Because it's positive, ma, it's sloping upwards. So here it should be some positive value. I don't know, I just put, and I just put something here, la, okay, la, positive value. Somewhere up here. Then after is zero, what is this? Oh, this is a negative value. It's sloping downwards already. So it should be somewhere down here in a negative. Last one, let's look at this point at the end. It's sloping up again. Wow, slope up, slope down like roller coaster like that, is it? So here should be some positive velocity. So somewhere here. So actually, dun dun dun, drum roll. What happens is this is actually a cosine graph. So velocity is actually cosine of t. Wow. How do we jump from sine become cosine? This is where you need to know the hex. Okay, so this is the graphical method. You just look at the slope up and down. But in case you don't have time to do this every question, here's the hex. There is this established pattern that we know already. Uh, okay, this is the hex. 101, if you don't have time to draw the graph and see what's the gradient. If you start off with a sine function and then you differentiate it with respect to, I don't know, t la, okay, sure, t, it will become a cos function or cos graph. Then you differentiate the cos graph, it will become a sine graph again, but negative sign. They become upside down. This one you can memorize, la. it's a hack to help you shortcut a bit. Then you differentiate the sine graph. You see where we're going? Oh, d by dt. It will become a... Ah, this one you think and see there. You see in the beginning, oh, sine become cos. So here sine become cos also, la. but got a negative, right? Here, so negative also. La. The pattern repeat, la. sine become cos, cos become sine. Then the last step, if you differentiate negative cos, what do you get back to the sign? Because when you differentiate cos, you get sine. How we know that? Ne? Here already happened. Ma. Differentiate cos, you get sine. So here differentiate cos, you get sine. But don't forget, a uh, negative sign up here. So like that. So this is the cycle pattern on how this sine and cos actually just become each other when you differentiate. And also remember that how we get this idea from, we are doing this. And you can see it's literally like a roller coaster. Like this person riding up and down. Can I slow down the speed? Ah? Oh, actually I can stop. Ah, okay. So beginning, remember I say, this, uh, this, this, this arrow here is a tangent to the curve there. It's positive, so it's green. So that's why this part it will be green, or some green value. Then here, if it's going down, it's negative. Then you find lo, at each point, what is the gradient? Okay, here is a negative gradient. Come to here is positive gradient. Quite straight, la, so almost constant. Here gradient is zero, almost zero. Here gradient is negative. Gradient is positive. Gradient, so you just so any kind of curvy curvy shape while well, you just make the you just write the function. You see where it's moving, how is it changing? Because after all, gradient is rate of change. 
ds dt means rate of change. Okay, so the key idea is this one. Final part. Okay, so we know differentiate sign become cos. What if you have different amplitude, different frequency, then how to differentiate? Ah, this is the final part. So if you have, let's say, s equals to 2 sine t, and I say differentiate this, give me ds dt. What's the answer? So differentiate with respect to t. You can say, oh, sine differentiate d become cos. So this is cos t. But what happened to the amplitude in front? Ah? Amplitude actually is unchanged. Unchanged, ah, I should write here. Unchanged. Why unchanged? Because the things that you are differentiating is this part. Sine function. You are differentiating, actually I should put the bracket the whole here. You are trying to differentiate this part only because the t is attached to the sine. Ah. So it's unchanged. Ah. But the 2 is just constant there, so unchanged. So if you have amplitude, unchanged. Uh, amplitude. Let's say you have s equals to 3 uh, cos 2t. Whoa, what is this? Now, what will be the velocity or the ds dt? So velocity, which is also ds dt. So you differentiate already, what happened? First thing you see the cos. Cos will become what? Cos will become negative sign. You know, let's just write it out here. Negative sign. But notice, what is this? We have a higher frequency here. 2t. Now when you see 2 inside the cos, uh, you need to take it out. So it will become 2 sign. Like this. So whatever constant is multiplied by t, you take it out. So 2 cos. 2t. This is your answer. But don't forget, amplitude is unchanged, so the 3 is still there. Okay, so first step, cos will become what? Cos will become negative sign. So that's why we have negative here. And where is this 2 come from? Inside. So I write here, constants inside mm, multiply by constants lah. That's where this one comes from. So your final answer will be negative 6 cos 2t. Yay! Now final challenge question. What if ding, 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 you have s equals to... Do we have negative displacement now? Never mind. Let's say you have a. Mm, shall I do sine or cos? Let's do cos. Omega t. Wow. Tell me what is the velocity? What is the acceleration of this object's motion? How to find? So first step, you need to remember, oh, if I differentiate displacement with respect to time, I get velocity. If I differentiate velocity, I get uh, acceleration because acceleration is dv dt. So first thing first, velocity is the change, rate of change of displacement. So, wow, why got A got W? Don't forget, these are constants. So you don't need to worry too much about them. Constant, constant. So you do the same thing, uh, write the constant first. Constant, not change. The constant outside, uh, amplitude, no change. Then you see, oh, I differentiate cos omega t. We got omega inside. So I take out the omega. And differentiate cos becomes sine. Got negative, ah? Got. So negative sine omega t. That's your first answer. Step by step, ah? Okay. We differentiate a cos, you get negative sine. So amplitude, no change. Cosine will become a negative sine. Omega t is still inside there, but the omega come out. So this is your answer. Let's simplify a bit. So this will be... A or negative A omega sine omega t. Last one. Acceleration is what? Acceleration is dv dt. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So you need to differentiate again. So we have to differentiate this, this v equation now. How to differentiate? So we stay calm and we look at the constants. Now what are the amplitude? The amplitude is this whole thing. 
amplitude now. The amplitude of this graph. La. So we just write the thing down, la, A omega, no change. Then we look at the sine, omega t. When you differentiate sine, you get what? You differentiate sine, you get cos omega t. The inside is still the same. But because of this omega, we have to take it out, so you got another omega outside. So the final answer is negative a omega square cos omega t. Wow. Wow. So you go from here to here to here. You just differentiate, differentiate, differentiate. And then from here, you can draw your graph ready. No? Okay. If I do a very quick draw, sine omega t for displacement against time. Sorry, cos. It will look something like this. Okay, la, this is as amplitude. Then if I want to go to, let's say, uh, velocity against time, it will become sine curve but upside down. So I draw something like that. And the amplitude is now negative A omega and A omega. Next one. If I want to draw acceleration graph, it's also a cos. So it's a negative cos. So the underwear is upside down. So it looks something like this. Then you label. Lo. Amplitude is what? A omega square. Here is A omega. So like that. Lo. If you don't have time to go and do the roller coaster one by one and check the gradient, this is a very useful hack. Differentiation. Okay, so to recap, First things first, when you are dealing with kinematics, remember that velocity is the rate of change of displacement and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Remember. Remember these. And sec number two, when you come to sine and cos graph, it's a cycle pattern. So you can memorize the cycle pattern. Lah. Okay, It's very helpful for you. So that is the end of this crash course on differentiation from power law, the basics, some kinematics, and then on to our sine and cosine graphs. That is the end. Wow, people take many, many, many months to learn this one, but you can catch this one. Very good. Lah. Okay, so that's all for today. See you in the next